We're back for another episode. It's been another week. Another week has gone by. Where is it gone? I don't know. You tell me. Oh, my friends, I've been on some dynamite uh, sessions recently. So much so they've inspired me. I was on a session recently, honest to goodness, where it was like, he's talking about, you know, as you might imagine, sales. And it was about that the the new way to sell is, isn't so much, um, you know, the classic, you know, use a phone or use an email or, you know, be, you know, be on social selling. It's that the, the new way of selling is you. You're, you're the commodity. You're pitching you, if you will. And uh, people react to you. And the whole premise of the conversation, this was not my conversation. It was somebody else's conversation. Of course, I totally interjected myself in it, um, is, is the importance these days of the individual. In fact, I've seen a lot of people out there, whether it's Justin Michaels, Josh Braun, Scott Lease, a lot of them out there, uh, Justin Welsh, uh, especially Justin Welsh, especially Justin Welsh, who, who goes on and says that that is how you sell now in the new new modern era we in. And it's probably more even, even more so the case in this fine year as we record this of 2020, the year of COVID, uh, where you know we're we're not able to go and mix and mingle at those live shows, you know, and be 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 profiled on all the videos and the highlight reels and everything else. So and everybody's just gone totally online and totally social, and it's about whoever has the most traction, you know, the most visibility that gets the most buzz. And we've seen it. You know, Justin Welsh talks about how he's turned his own personal brand into a money making machine. And that's simply because of awareness. And I can I can recognize that uh, because I have seen similar results with any efforts I make that leads come in to me because they like me, they respect me. The biggest comment I get over and over again on my stuff is they like my content, right? So they trust me because they like my content content. Well, that's important. It doesn't, you know, they may like me. They may not like me. It doesn't really matter. You know, do they respect me? That matters. Do they think I add value? That matters. Do they remember who I am or at least that they know my name and that I am someone worthy of remembering? That matters. But for me, it always comes back to the content I put out there. They, I, What I hear a lot is they don't feel the content is biased. It doesn't feel like it has a vendor spin. It feels like it's adding value. It's sparking conversation. It has great debate. So that's something that I've gravitated around and that all matters today. And so today, Normally, you would hear me riff nonstop. I might tell a personal story. I might reminisce about what's happened at a previous time in my life. And nine times out of 10, whatever I'm gathering about comes back and, and it ties in with what the day's topic is. We're doing things different. We've never done this before. Normally, you would have me have one guest. And, and today, I don't have one guest. In fact, I don't, I, don't, I don't have two guests. I have three guests. I have three guests amongst the show, a well as well as myself. So it'll be four of us talking nonstop. So you're saying, Dara, what you're rambling now. So what's the topic? Get to it, lad. And that's a great point. The topic is exactly what we've been talking about. It's about the importance of personal branding. Now you've heard me talk about this before. I've brought it up over and over again, and I feel so committed about it. But it was the conversation, you know, when, when Justin's out there, uh, you know, he talks about this on Thursday Night Sales. If you've ever been part of that, you should be part of that community, uh, where it's like, that's what matters. He and I had a webinar not too long ago about his point was that content marketing no longer works. If he has a company send him content, he doesn't care. It just goes into his, his trash. But what he does is he likes the content of an individual and he follows certain individuals. And then because of those individuals and the content he's consumed from those individuals that he's actually done business with them. So that was when I was like, man, that's just a whole different way of looking at things. It's no longer branding like a, like a Coca-Cola or Nike or anybody else. And it was interesting because I had this conversation the other day with somebody who was looking for a job. And uh, I was trying to help them and say, you know, you've got to build your own personal brand. It's not just about having a great profile. You got to actually get engaged. And that's how you're going to float to the top. He was affected by the whole uh, COVID, you know, uh, tobacco. And, and his reaction to me was, that's a gimmick, Daryl, and I'm not going to do that. And I was like, well, okay, dude, it's not a gimmick. It's just the way it is. And either you adapt and survive or you don't, and then you look for a different career. And then he hung up on me and I'm not making this up. He hung up on me. So, you know, I'm here today. If you, this is your point in time. If you want to disconnect, press stop, go away, you know, shut the browser, whatever, however you're consuming this, do it now because what I'm telling you is truth. But it's not me. 
I'm not going to be the one telling you. I'm just going to be leading the conversation. Let's bring the guests in right now. I want to bring in them. One, two, three. Here we go. First up is Christina uh, Yarmil, and she's with Personal ABM, Personal Account Based Marketing. Emphasis in the word personal. Uh, also part of Stop the Sales Drop. And she's going to talk to you soon about some kick-ass event they have coming up shortly. I may or may not be involved in. Christina, welcome to the show. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's good to see you, Daryl. All right. So for those watching video, why do you look like you're half nervous and half excited? Just so we're curious about this. I'm always half nervous and half excited. I don't know why. <laughs> I think it puts me on my toes. <laughs> I love it. Next up is John Moore. And I love John Moore. He is VP of Revenue Enablement at Big Tin Can. He it calls himself the collaborator, and he truly is. Uh, if you haven't followed John yet, and this goes for everybody, any of these individuals on LinkedIn, make a point of doing it right now. Multitask. John, my friend, how are you, sir? I am doing great, Daryl. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so um, excited. I've wanted this challenge for a long time, so I'm excited to be here. All right. Rounding out the collection is Josie Marshburn. Now, Josie is the CEO of Sales Enablement Benchmark. She is just an amazing woman. You have to go follow her. All these people on LinkedIn, I mentioned that already, go follow them. Josie, welcome to the show. Hello. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Look at that big smile. I love it. Okay. So let's just get right into it, okay? We're gonna go right into it. First off, I'm gonna throw it out there. Let's start off with, with the, the elephant in the room. Personal branding, as it relates to a sales rep, is it relevant is the question. Is it relevant? And then I'll let you expound on what does relevancy mean. I'm gonna start with John first, and then I'm gonna let the women have the last word because you, if you're smart, you always let the women have the last word. I've learned that with a lot of years of marriage. John, is it relevant to a sales rep? Or as the individual hung up on me said, it's a gimmick. No, it's absolutely relevant for a sales rep. You need to show that you have something to say that's of value to people you're trying to reach out to. And a damn well better not be all about you, 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 but you better show that you have an understanding of what their pain points are, their needs, and start to prove credibility. So it's absolutely important. Is there a time when somebody, John, shouldn't care about personal branding? You know, if someone says to you, you know, it's not about me, it's about the product or the service, it's about my company, my employer and their brand. You know, it, I'm, I'm just a facilitator. You know, I'm just a person, I'm a matchmaker. I, I match, you know, your pains and problems up with my company's solutions. Yeah. What do you say to that? We're not all Yentels out there anymore, just being <laughs> those blind matchmakers. Yeah, I'll first say that. I mean, you represent your business. So if you're picking up the phone as an SDR, making phone calls, if they have a clue who you are because they're aware of you on LinkedIn or someplace else, also by building your own personal brand, if it's in alignment with the company, you start to amplify your own brand. You've got to do it, create you and adding value in every conversation. So you've got to do that, man. I love what you're saying there. So pick up what John just said there. If they know who you are, they've heard of your name, and then you actually reach out to them, phone, email, whatever, they're going to respond. I remember Morgan Ingram sharing a story about uh, there. he had a success story, one of his clients, and uh, and she followed his content. And one day she was sitting at her desk, and he cold called her. He called her, and she said when she saw Morgan Ingram come up on the actual display of the phone, she freaked out, spazzed, and picked up the phone right away. So how many calls did that person ignore, but they didn't ignore Morgan's because they knew Morgan's brand and were a fan of the content? All right, I'm going to bring it over to Josie. Josie, uh, I asked John this question. I'm going to ask you. I want to know your opinion. You can disagree with John if you want to. Personal branding, is it relevant to a sales rep? It's always relevant. So the answer is yes. Um, it's really interesting when you um, think about what we use LinkedIn for today. We use LinkedIn for networking. We use it for lead generation. We use it to convey a message either about ourselves or our company. So all of that is branding, right? And it's, it's surprising to me how poorly people will have their profile on LinkedIn or some of the things they may say on LinkedIn um, I was coaching a girl the other day and she put something rather negative out on LinkedIn and she's looking for a job and it was about recruiters. And so I sent her a, a quick message and I said, hey, um, if it was me, I wouldn't put that out there. And this is why. And she said, she sent me a really nice note back and she said, yeah, but I disagree with you. So I'm going to leave it out here. 
So, yeah, that's an interesting one, right? Because I do agree that when you have solid, constructive discourse, you may not agree with one another. And I see the best engagement. Again, Scott Lees and I got into a bit of a Twitter flaming exchange uh, a couple days ago uh, for a topic that's not relevant right now. And we went back and forth and back and forth. And we were completely at odds, completely at odds. And uh, and then he, then he texts me later on that night. And he's like, dude, that was the most engagement I have ever had on Twitter. That was awesome. So the point was, even though we were disagreeing, it was constructive and it was back and forth and people were part of the conversation. But to your point, you know, she disagreed with you, but your whole point was it's affecting your brand. It may, it may not be what you said. It's affecting your brand. That's right. I love your point about poor LinkedIn profiles. Do you see that? A lot. I see it a lot. I see them. They're glorified CVs is what they are. And there's nothing else there. Yeah. You know, um, I used to teach an onboarding program when I was at Oracle. And one of the things that we would teach everybody in that onboarding program was the importance of LinkedIn, not only in your brand as a person, but in how you're conveying to your customers and prospects who you are and your expertise. So we would have somebody from LinkedIn come in and speak to them. We would then take a professional photograph with them, and then we would make them all go to LinkedIn and update their LinkedIn profile. So I think it's super important. And, you know, as a salesperson, if you're not going to build a brand around your expertise, how do people know what you what you do and what you're really good at? All right. I want to flip it to Christina here because of something Josie just said. Now, clearly, Josie, uh, uh, Christina, I'm even going to ask you your thoughts on a personal brand because, I mean, hey, you're at your company is called Personal ABM. So I'm pretty confident I know your position on this one. But I, I am going to ask you something about what Josie said. She talked about, you know, she made if your profile doesn't tell a story. And I know how important I've heard you talk about your profile needs to tell a story. Can, uh, but what does that mean? Help me understand. What does that mean? Well, it needs to show your expertise. It needs to show your point of view. That's how you're going to stand out from other SDRs, from other um, business development or account reps or AEs, whatever it is, and show who you are. It's how you build trust. It's how you build value. So when we are forced into the digital age, which most of us were already here, but the ones that were in event uh, you know, marketing or business development at events or in-person things and force it to digital. You build trust. It's much easier. I'm not going to say it's easy in person, but on digital, you have to build trust and add value. Otherwise, you're just going to be seen um, as a salesperson as, as opposed to a trusted vendor or a trusted source and or advisor. Okay, so here's a question for you then. You talked about, you said you need to have your own point of view come across as part of the, the profile, which... You know your own point of view so that means the language you're abstract you're about whatever whatever you're wanting to feature so many of you don't feature use the feature function use the feature function all right it's a great chance to get your style out there but it also comes across in your post and in your engagement so let me ask you this christina if if all i ever post are somebody else's posts and that's it and if all i ever say in any kind of comments and other people's posts is like either i just like it or I just say, yeah, what he said, out of boy, preach. And that's all I say. Is is my point of view out there, just so I'm clear, as it relates to my personal brand? It's funny that you say that because that's one of my biggest pet peeves. It's kind of just showing up to social and showing up on digital. Um, you're not sharing, again, your point of view. You're just re-sharing other people's things. If you, you can share other people's info and content as much as you want. But put your spin on it, put your take on it, say what you agree with, say what you disagree with, but it, say why it is so that you're adding that value and building trust so you're not that actual resource and just sharing other people's content, which doesn't really add any value that you're looking to build. Okay, so we're going to take a quick commercial break here, folks. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back because I want to ask these heavy hitters. What are the objections they get to doing it? What are the excuses that you give to other people on why you don't do it? Don't go anywhere. We're right back.
Okay, so I'm just gonna throw it. I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm not even gonna do round robin anymore. We're gonna get people talking over each other. It's gonna be fantastic. Number one excuse any of you here shut it out for why you won't do personal branding, especially on something like LinkedIn. Number one. Don't my have favorite time. one. Favorite one, go for it. I love it. That's okay. Cross talk. What's your favorite one? My, my favorite one is I don't want to have a social presence. No social presence. John, what's your favorite? What's your number one you hear? Don't have time. No time. No social presence. No time. Christina. I represent a company that had behind the logo. I re ah. <laughs> what I hear a lot of is I don't want to get trolled. I don't want to look stupid. All right. So that's what I hear a lot of. Okay. So let's go on that. Um, John, I don't have time. Is that is that valid or not? No, it's it's not valid. You can spend five to ten minutes a day and do an adequate job of getting your opinions out there and sharing a little bit of value each day. Now, I certainly spend more than that uh, because that's just a big part of my job and a big part of my personal mission. But if you spend five to ten minutes, let's say on LinkedIn, looking at content and hashtags that are relevant to you. You can find content that you want to share back out, add, as Christina said, your personal viewpoint. And an occasional preach is okay, Christina, because I like using preach. Uh, but as long as you add your personal viewpoint too, I think that's the key. And five to 10 minutes a day, that's all you need to get going in the game. If you're gonna use the preach, then you also have to use the boom, just so we're clear on this, all right? You can't use one without the other. Boom, boom there we go. Okay. Um, Josie, talk to me. So you, you shared the objection. How do you respond to them when they give you that objection? I don't know how you sell today without a social presence. I also don't know how you build your personal brand without a social presence. So I was having an exchange today with somebody on LinkedIn and he said, I just started using LinkedIn. And I thought, man, where have you been? It's been around since 2004. And it's, it's not just COVID that's made it a valuable tool, especially for business. Um, you know, it's a great way to stay in touch with clients. It's a great way to stay in touch with colleagues that you've worked with. So I think it's super important to build your brand on a platform like LinkedIn. But I also think it's important to build it in the right way. And what I mean by that is if all you're going to do is go out and collect a bunch of people in your network that don't add value, why are they there? Okay, so let's go with that. I One of the topics I want to talk about was where do I start? So you made the comment, Josie, about you just started using it. You know, where have you been? So uh, let me go to Christina. Now I'm the, I, I stopped the round robin. I'm going back to the round robin. Christina, where do I start? How do I make this easy? Because it seems like a lot of work to me and I'm scared. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm insecure and I might look stupid and I don't want to be frail. I think people have to get away from the playing a volume game or the awareness game or the, that mentality of just showing up type of thing and do it in bite-sized chunks. Work on your profile a little bit at a time. It doesn't have to be all done at once. Change the way you're actually engaging with people. Um, and think of every little engagement you have, whether you're actually uh, commenting somewhere or sharing a discussion or reaching out to connect as a mini sales conversation or a mini conversation of um, to add value to that conversation, whether it's with a prospect or someone that you might partner with or someone that you want to actually get to know or you want them to get to know you. If you're always adding value every step of the way, no matter what you're doing, you'll be on the right track. So one of the things I did uh, so I, and like Josie said, you know, I, I had been on LinkedIn, but I really wasn't using LinkedIn, if you will. It was a glorified resume placement holder. Uh, a couple years ago, as I was on the Christmas holidays, and I went and I said, well, you know, I probably I probably should, you know, have a decent LinkedIn profile. Um, and I bought an ebook on Amazon, a Kindle book, uh, and it was how to write a killer LinkedIn profile plug for Brenda Bornstein. I don't know the woman, but she changed my life. It was less than 10 bucks. It, I read, I skimmed it. You know, because I need, you know, a lot of it, right? So you skimmed it. I read it in a couple hours. And then I spent the next couple of days just tweaking here and there. Changed my world. My views went through the roof. The feedback I got, the, the inbound I got, it was crazy. So that's how I started. I did it on my own time, exactly as Christina said, and I bought a book. Crazy, you can do it. Lots of YouTube videos, lots of experts out there. Don't be shy. Don't, you know, many employers are now actually helping you do that. In fact, let's go back to you, John. How do you work with your sales and organization, your sales 
reps to make sure they have a presence on social because Big Tin Can is really good at this. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, uh, so let me start back briefly though, if I may, Daryl. Uh, nobody yeah. wants to be Prail. Nobody wants to be Prail. So let's no. establish that. You're right. Yeah. Nobody wants that. Agreed. But one, of the things, one of the things I did for myself personally was I built a strategy document. What the heck am I trying to accomplish? And as a result of putting that forward, I also, I, you know, I did a lot of the same things that you talk about. I, I bought a couple of books. I listened to some stuff on Audible. But ultimately what I did was I boiled down those lessons and what we've done internally at Big Ten Can, and we're a work in progress, but I simply put together a series of training courses and best practices for the entire customer facing team. And the key lessons there for them were really that you need to not make this a resume. I mean, you mentioned it, so many of the LinkedIn profiles are resumes. So what I did was I took my own LinkedIn profile, walked them through section by section, the best practices of how to use it, and showed them how I had converted my own personal LinkedIn profile to be much more of a story about how I can add value, how I can be of help and of service to you, the person listening to me, the person reading my resume. And I just simply reinforced that with the sales team. And there were plenty of people, let's be very honest and very transparent, who said, John, that's BS. I don't have time for that. But we slowly started converting some people and, and we're gonna to continue to convert more and more people to refer uh, to enhancing their resume, their LinkedIn profile, so that it really tells a story about how they can help the customers that are out there. So one of the things I did with my reps um, is I had them start intentionally using, you know, once you connect with somebody to send them a, a voice message or send them a video message just because maybe they've gone silent. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk. And then all of a sudden they go silent. They ghost them, right? And it was amazing how quickly when they did that, they, they the prospects re-engaged and my reps were on fire. I was like, this is killer. This is amazing. And I'm like, cool. So now you get it. It works. So now if it works, don't you want to really exploit the platform, the channel? And to do that, you need to focus on your own personal brand. You need to make sure your profile looks good. You need to be engaged. You need to go to all these communities. And we started throwing communities at them. And that's my next question. I'm going to throw this up. But let me go to Josie first. Josie, do you recommend just LinkedIn? Because there's, there's a ton of communities. There's obviously LinkedIn. There's Twitter. Then there's a lot of specialty communities that have sprung up. There's Rev Genius. There's Revenue Collective. There's Thursday Night Sales. There's a whole bunch. What are your recommendations? All of the above. So I think there's some really amazing blogs that are out there. Um, Quotable by Salesforce is a great sales blog. Um, there are great podcasts that you can listen to. There are great um, um, so, uh, community forums that you can join. Sales Enablement Society is a great example of one. Um, the collaborator now has one that people can join. So there's, there's a whole lot of different things that you can do to either build your presence, build your brand, or you know, in some cases, share some expertise from other people. Christina. What are your thoughts? I, I know you're an, a LinkedIn advocate, just LinkedIn. I mean, if I was going to start one place, would I start at LinkedIn or or should I do what Josie said and go everywhere? Um, I, am, I, I agree with the um, idea of trying to go everywhere. I don't necessarily do it myself. And LinkedIn is my platform of choice, but it is just a platform. It is just a tool. I believe that the platform doesn't really matter where you are as long as you're in the right place for your you know your audience it's the personal communication it's that emotional connection that you're making um and building trust so communication versus platform if you take that communication across any platform that you choose i think that's the bigger um value add okay so christina just said something that was solid gold and i'm not sure you picked up on it she said if it's the right platform for the audience you're trying to target right so that's huge for many of us it's linked in but you know i look at my higher ed vertical that we sell into they're all over twitter that's where they are they're not on linkedin anywhere but they're on twitter so you got to go to twitter if that's your target audience and a lot of these communities are amazing you know but you also understand the composition of them so for example i i'm in i'm personally in a community called uh 
Rev Genius. And you're going to see that's a lot of middle layer marketing ops and sales people, right? So starting to middle layer. Then I'm in another community that I pay for. I pay 10 bucks a month for. Um, that's called Peak. And it's for people who want to be a CMO. And that's much more senior level. So different audiences, different communities, different conversations, and both add value. So even though I'm more established in my career, I still get a lot of value of, of, of hanging out with those who are earlier in their career because they just have a different point of view than me, a different take. And often they're symbolic of the people I want to sell to because not everybody I'm selling to is 50 years old. Some of them are 30 years old, 25 years old. So understanding their points of view is huge. Just understand you're going there for a reason. Uh, John, what are your thoughts? Is it just LinkedIn or do we go somewhere? you got a big smile on your face or is it somewhere else? Like You tell me. I'm, I'm laughing because there's so much good feedback here, but Again, I, go, I went forward by building a strategic plan about where I wanted to target. And it came down to exactly what Christina said. Where are the people that I want to build a relationship with? Now, for me, it, it's, a, it's a mix of CMOs, uh, uh, sales enablement folks, sellers, and so on and so forth. So the biggest community that I could most easily become a part of and share value into was LinkedIn. But I've also started to spread out to these other communities as well. Now that I have sort of that initial beachhead where I'm delivering consistent value there. But, but that's, the, that's the gold standard. And I agree with that point from Christina. Where do you need to be? I think it's important, though, that as quickly as you, you achieve your initial level of success on LinkedIn, if that's where your community is, you start to identify, just like any good marketer would do, where are the other places that your audience lives? and become a part of those communities as well. But it's always about a, a cost a benefit analysis, uh, not to make this too boring and dry, but yeah, I'm not gonna go spend a lot of time on TikTok because there's not anybody talking about sales enablement there. Nobody's TikToking about sales enablement, gotcha. And I agree <laughs> no, with I've you. I've learned a couple of dance steps though. I've oh, learned that's... to dance a little better. Yeah, 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 but no, but no, no sales enablement. <laughs> I, I love this, right? Because what I've heard you guys all say is, understand, if I back it up, understand where your customer that you're trying to reach lives, right? That's kind of your ideal customer profile, and that's where you need to go. Then I've heard you say, ease into it. Make sure you've got a, a personal, professional, polished profile to start, all right? Let your personality come through, have a point of view. You can get help either in books or in videos or expert advisors. You can allocate a few minutes a day simply to go do it, to start and get in there, but have a take. Don't just regurgitate what other people are saying. Be constructive, ease your way into it, and be, and you will build your reputation over time. All right, final thoughts. Uh, here's my question. If there's one piece of actionable advice or feedback, so it's pretty much open-ended, that you can share with our audience today, what would it be? I'm going to start with John. One piece. Fix your profile. Take a look at your profile and remove every element a resume to it and read it or share it with someone who is your ideal customer profile. Ask them if that's the resume, if that's the profile, I should say, of someone they would trust and start to communicate with. Josie, one piece of advice. Please, please, please read a company's about page before reaching out. Um, if you do that, you'll know exactly what they do and you will stop trying to reach out to people that cannot buy your product that you're trying to sell. That's gold. Christina, I'm going to coach you on your advice should be. Your advice should be to go to an event. What event should they go to? They should go to Stop the Sales Drops upcoming event. Uh, it's a LinkedIn training navigating the new uh, social selling and um, Dara will be there, Josie will be there, and John will be there. And it's happening August 18th, 19th, and 20th. But if you can't join us live, you can always access it on demand. So it's stopthesalesdrop.com backslash LinkedIn training. There you go. The conversation started today and it carries on again. We're all going to be there with Christina. My name is Daryl Prale. We're out of time. Big thank you to John Moore. Follow him, Josie Marshburn. Follow her, Christina Yaramillo. Follow her and go to the Stop the Drop event. I hope you had fun today, folks. What do you think of this many people? It's a lot. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.